Okay, and so these are formulas, page 15. There's also these very important points here, how to, how to reduce the total interest paid on the car, right? How to reduce your monthly payment. We talked about that. That's all on page 15. Um, I think uh, when you go to page 11, we did the chart of pros and cons, right? The uh, new versus used, that's on page 11. Um, one thing that I, that I did not mention, a disadvantage for buying used is the potential of hidden damage, right? That, that somebody, like uh, potential hidden damage. So if you want to write that down, because the private, right? Like um, even if it's a dealer, Dealer is probably less so than private because a dealership has a reputation to live up to, right? If they, if word comes out that this deal, certain dealerships, they have like cars that start breaking down after a while, they would probably not be in business for very long. But if it's private, for sure, you have to be careful because a lot of people will try to hide dents and scratches or even the classic is like, I always ask, like, have you ever been in an accident? It's like, yeah, it was just a little fender bender front, you know, it's just like a little, like, that's what people normally do, right, to minimize. But just so you know, if you if you have a somewhat decent impact, like, it affects so many components in your vehicle, right? It bends the frame sometimes, and and uh, if, if uh, especially if that person didn't claim it through AutoPack, if they just try to fix it themselves. Uh, you may not know, right, that there are things wrong with it. So you have to be careful, very careful with uh, with the hidden damage. So what I wanted to to I wanted to give you one resource that I have used in the past, and uh, who knew I was going to promote YouTube videos, right? But there's this this is just one one guy that I know, right? He's been at it for a long time. His name is his channel is called Chris Fix. Right? Look at how many subscribers he has. He really knows what he's talking about. You might have an uncle or a, somebody that knows a lot about uh, cars. Go for it, right? But you, when you buy used, um, the more information you have, the more research you have done, the more equipped you are to ask those questions that really matter, right? Uh, and And like I, for example, I wanted to buy a Jeep Wrangler, right? And I researched so much about that car. So when you go to a dealership, they're like, yeah, it's like, no, is this, does this have that? Like you're looking for specific things, right? Like you're looking under the dashboard, you're looking under the car for certain things that are normally wrong with this car. Uh, and so sometimes the, the salesmen, they're kind of intimidated. They're like, oh, this, this person really knows what they're talking about. So I better, I better get my facts straight, right? And so they can't really, and you have the, the power of saying, well, this car, you're selling it for this much. It doesn't have these, these features. I found the same features somewhere else and the car was worth, like was less. Um, then you have some power to negotiate there. But that's, that's not the main point I'm trying to make here. The main point I'm trying to make is, so if you look at Chris Fix, I just put in buying a used car, how to inspect a car for a purchase. That's just the one video I found, right? But remember Chris Fix. I don't know if you want to write that down somewhere. But this is the one I used. He has a link to a used car ins inspection checklist. So when you click on that, I actually printed this. And some people will look at you funny. They're like, oh my goodness, this person is just going over the top, right? Uh, but it basically walks you through all the things that you're you're supposed to watch out for, right? The wheels, the interior, under the car, right? Are there leaks? Is there rust? How's the suspension? And he actually, his videos, he has a series of five videos that walk you through, like, how would you know if the shocks are about to be, you know, ab about to go, where you have to replace them? Like, how can you check for things, right? 
uh, and then he says uh, value of the car like how to how to research um, the value of the car where can you find that right uh, and then when you're actually going to go and do a test drive, right? There's a, he, he even like has a little scanning tool that he plugs into the car because every car you can plug in a scanning tool and it will tell you if there were any errors on the engine that the, that the person you just bought it from tried to clear. Like, you know, when a check engine light comes on, you can clear that and, and make it look like everything is good. And then they pop up later after a while, right? So that he tells you what to do before startup, cold startup, warm startup, like he, what to look for. And obviously it's a lot, it's a lot of information, but uh, just do your research, right? Interior, what to look for there. It's an extensive, uh, right? What to look for lights, are they all working, body work, right? Um, one thing that I learned about body work, is that technically, let's say uh, you ask, like, has this car ever been in an accident? And, and the person says, no. Every door, or basically on the newer cars, every part on the car should have a, the VIN number of the car, a, like a sticker of the VIN number, of the serial number on it. If all of a sudden you notice that that serial number is different than the car has everywhere else, that door has been replaced, right? Uh, and so that sometimes you can easily tell that the car has been in an accident and, and you can uh, look for and kind of ask those questions, right? There's a brake test, turning test. When you go on the highway, he tells you like how to, how to rev the engine and how fast to go or what to do to kind of listen for things. So it's three pages, right? Um, I just wanted to put it out there that way you have some resources to go by, right? So that's Chris Fix, right? And he has like five episodes here. At the side of the road inspection, what the car is worth, engine inspection, interior and exterior. So what the checklist is walking you through, he has it in video form and he actually shows you how to look for it, right? So uh, remember that this, this guy has a lot of use. Um, he's been at it for a long time. And he's really good at it. Okay, so that is that. Another thing I wanted to bring up is a Lean search. Like, what is a Lean search? So before I bought my car, I basically typed in uh, Manitoba Lean search or something like that. Uh, oh, I misspelled search. That's not a good search, is it? Yeah. Um, like, so there, I think the one I went with is leanpro.com. Uh, no, no, not this one. Maybe the speedy search, that's CA. Yeah, so land titles, vehicle liens, and corporate services. So you can do a series, uh, and it costs you twenty-three fifty on this website. You type in the year uh, and make of the car and the VIN number, which I, for example, I looked at a car on Kijiji and I, I was very interested in, and I, I went to look at it, but didn't take a picture of the VIN number. So I asked the owner, like, can you send me a picture of the serial number probably the owner probably knew what I was trying to do right so I, I do a search and not everything came up clean because it could even be uh, registered that the, the banks put a lien on the car so you can't just sell it and take off with the money so even in the states somebody could do it in the states and then drive up here and sell it and then you're in trouble right so that's a lien search can be done online you can do it yourself it's not a whole lot of money uh, it's just, you just need a credit card. All right. Enough of me talking about <clears throat> things that may or may not interest you, but I, I thought, hey, at least you will have heard it, right? Let's go back to page 21 here. And before I move on to leasing, 
I'm gonna at least do two more questions. Uh, one one that is a I call this the full right. You have to do all of the work, and then I will do another one where you have to do some of the work. So on page 21, question one, we're gonna do this this chart right here, and I hope you did some of that um, at uh, on your own, right? So Jamie purchased a vehicle for 3,500. She had to borrow 3,000. So basically, there's a $500 down payment. That's what's happening here, right? She needs to borrow three grand at four and a half percent over four years. So what you do first, you figure out the payment. So you're gonna borrow 3,000. That's the loan, and you're gonna go get it from the table on page 14. And uh, so that that rate is 22.88, right? If you match four and a half percent at four years, that is a table rate, okay? So when you multiply this and divide it by a thousand, you get 68.64 per month, right? Your payments are always per month in this unit, okay? We won't do bi-weekly or semi-monthly or anything like that, but the banks do that, right? Once you find your payment, you enter it into all the payment boxes because the payment never changes, okay? That stays the same. Everything else here will change, but not the payment, all right? Then you're basically... This box right here, folks, is the same, is done the same way as finding the first month's interest. Okay, this box right here. So, how do you do that? You use this formula that I gave you on page, uh, was it 15, right? The interest just for the month. You take the loan, like the 3000 that you start off with, you multiply it by 4.5 divided by 100. Right, 4.5 divided by 100 gives you 0 0.045. And I will just do that here. 4.5% is equal to 4.5 divided by 100, which in turn gives you 0 0.045. And that's where I get this number from. The formula says loan times the interest rate not the table rate. Don't use the 2288. And you divide that by 12. Okay? That's how you get this number that goes in this box. So 3,000 times 0 0.045 divided by 12. It's 1125 that you get for the first box. No rounding necessary. Okay? Dollar sign, 1125. There it is. And we know that the interest and the principal, these two make up your payment, right? So now that you've calculated the interest, we can just simply go payment minus this, we get that, okay? So we will go 68.64 minus 11.25. And tomorrow, I will AC you on this, okay? So you can be prepared. And it won't just happen once because this is one that students struggle with a lot. So I want to uh, make sure you understand that. So you get 57.39. And then we go 3,000 minus 57.39. Okay, minus 57.39. So this number goes here. You subtract it. You get that 2942.61, which I told you already, right? Yesterday, I gave you that number, so you kind of knew you were on the right track. Interest for, this is this would be called interest paid on the second month's payment, right? So you would go, you take that new owing balance, 61, and you still do the same thing after it, okay? The interest rate stays the same for this question, right? Times 0 0.045 divided by 12. So I'm gonna type that in. 
and that's 1103. 1103, okay? And we know that it's 6864 minus 1103, okay? Fifty seven sixty one. And then we go minus fifty seven sixty one here. Right? And then uh, that gives us exactly twenty eight eighty five here. One more month. The third month interest would be 28.85 multiplied by 0 0.045 divided by 12. And that's 10.82. Watch the rounding, right? It's 10.818 and that 8 bumps the 1 to 2. So it's 10.82, right? And then we go 6864 minus 1082. And that's 5782. So as you see, the interest slowly goes down, the payment slowly goes up very slowly. Right? And then uh, we're just going to check here. Right, we're going to write down because this is in our notes, right? So I'm going to go 2885 minus 5782, and you get 282718. So this checks out. Okay. So by the end of the third month, you will be owing this much. Okay, and this could be done for. 48 months, right? Because it's four, four years over 12 months, right? So that's what you get there. I hope it starts to make a bit more sense. I know some of, some of us are like, it's spinning, right? Your head is spinning. So that's why I'm going to encourage you, right, to um, either watch the video again or I give you the answers here. So write it down quickly. This one I'm going to let you do, right? You know the answer. Maybe what I will do is I will just give you this one here as well. Right? Some of us need to know right after the first line, am I on the right track, right? So that is what I'm going to give you there. So write it down and then we'll go to page 22 where there is a partially filled in table already. Question three, that is. Question three. So I still give you all the information, right? This is the vehicle. You have to borrow this much. So there was a down payment. I could actually ask you, hey, what was the down payment, right? On a question like this, you just subtract these two, right? to figure out what the down payment was. And I already have it filled in. So based on this information here, this is your payment. So just fill in the blank. So how would you do the first row here? You need to know what the unpaid balance is here. And we know that the principal brings this amount down. So basically all I need you to know in this table here is what to do with the numbers, where to add, where to subtract, right? So you go 28,750 uh, minus 40183. And that gives you 28,000. Don't forget your dollar signs in these if you want to get full marks, right? 28,348, all right. And now, what happens now? Well, I, I'm given the principal again. I can keep subtracting from the unpaid balance, right? 
like that. So you can actually leave this on your calculator and just go 404, 18 again, subtracting, and you get 27, 943.99. Twenty seven nine four three point nine nine. And now we have to deal with this one here, the interest. Well, remember that these two here, the principal, the monthly principal, the monthly interest, they add up to your payment, right? So to get the interest here, okay, right on. I'll be moving on to leasing right away, or started at least. So this one here is 569.54 minus 404.18, and that is 165.36, okay? That's the interest that you'll be paying there. And then one more. Here we would just have to subtract, right? Payment minus that to get this. And that is 406.53. And then we're going to subtract 406.53 from the unpaid balance. And that is 27537 exactly. Okay. And you're done. Okay. All right. Um, I have a bit of a change of plans here. Uh, Write down the answer to four. I don't know if I gave that to you yesterday, 57, 43, Did I give this to you yesterday? I didn't? Okay. And I don't know if I gave you number five. Uh, if you didn't do number five, I will give you that anyways. 2850.07. That's what you're supposed to get. The trick is, the trick is that this question goes all the way back to buying privately, right? So you have to figure out what what it is that you're uh, borrowing or how much the whole thing would be after tax. And when you do the work, I will tell you this, that the private is 4565 after tax. So if you do the work using that long formula that I give you for buying a used car under a private sale, this is what you get when you do the work. So uh, obviously you need to take down the down payment and then come up with your payment. And I will tell you that the payment is supposed to be 164.91 if you do it right. So this is a little bit of a longer comprehensive sorry after tax I forgot to write that down so tomorrow be ready for a for an amortization table or a payment schedule type question okay three yeah This one? This one? Did I make a mistake here? You think? 28. So you want me to go 28348.17 minus 404.18? I still get the same. Well, 
if you have a question, I can address that after, okay? Okay, I'm not going to get to leasing because I, I talk too much. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Go to page 24. This, this type of question was on a provincial exam. Okay, so I'm, one, I'm curious to see if you could do that. Okay, so a new, so write this down, please. A new car on page 24, that is. A new car was purchased and financed. Details below. So this is how they set it up. They give you a whole bunch of information. They said that the car was worth 20 grand. Okay. They tell you that there was a trade-in for 6,500. They, they told you that the taxes on this purchase I'm adding two zeros to all my other ends here. Taxes was that. Total interest paid on the financing was $2,000. And the term of the loan was 60 months. And they put that in a box like this. And then they ask questions like this. Calculate the total cost of purchasing the vehicle. And then B, calculate the monthly payment. And keep in mind that there was no table given on this particular question. So you cannot find the payment using that table on page 14, only with what you're given here. C. If the options were 3,700, determine the sticker price. So I'm going to leave that there. Make sure you write that down. And your homework is make sure you get the uh, amortization tables figured out, right? Make sure you understand how that works. If you need to watch the video, do the video. And try to answer this question right here, OK? Uh, we only have five minutes left. So if you want to give it a go, that's it's, and it's only based on what is given here, nothing else. Okay, uh, third homework, make sure your study sheet is up to date and you have clearly labeled formulas, pros and cons of used, new, all of that stuff written on there. And um, just skim through the pages and see what sticks out. It's better to have something on there than nothing, right? And you can use two boxes or like half a page if you want for vehicle finance, right? All right, I think I'm going to stop there.